Hey guys, I wish I could be there today, but I am going to be down in Grand Canyon National Park having an awesome time. So I hope you guys are having a great time at school. I'm going to have you decorate my classroom today. I want this to be a winter wonderland when I come back. So I'm going to have you guys making snowflakes. Now you guys have probably made snowflakes before, many of you. But in case you haven't, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you make snowflakes. I'm guessing in the past, some of you might have used this strategy where you fold the paper up, have this nice little rectangle area at the end that you cut off. So you make a nice square piece of paper, fold that up a couple of times, and that'll give you a nice little base for your snowflake. Cut off the edge here, make some fun shapes, and you end up with a lovely little white snowflake. And you can cut some different designs in it. Fold this up. If I cut things along the edge here, it'll make some designs in the middle. Cut something over on this other edge. And we end up with some intricate interior designs, if you so desire. Now, um, I loved to do this as a kid. And I would make snowflakes fairly frequently. And I'd try all sorts of different designs. Now, one day, I decided I was going to look at some snowflakes for some inspiration. I wanted to have a fun design, so I did my design like normal, fold it up, and cut off some edges here. Took a look at it to see what we have. And that's pretty cool. Maybe if I got some designs, from nature, then I could get a little bit more exciting. So I started taking a look at some photographs of snowflakes. So you guys can see, here's a snowflake. Here's a nice snowflake. Getting some pretty cool designs. And I compared those to what I'd done right here, and I noticed a ghastly mistake that I'd made on this. Whatever shall I do to fix this terrible, horrible mistake? As I was looking through here, I saw, wait a minute, every snowflake here has one, two, three, four, five, six. Six points, six points, six points, and my snowflake only has four. So I thought, all right, well, how am I going to fix that? It must be that I just need to fold it some more, because if I fold it some more, we saw earlier that we end up with more points and more designs. So I folded it over again, made another cut, thought, hey, this would be pretty cool, and unfolded it to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six. How do I get six? I just went from four to eight in one fold. So I started to analyze. I thought, what do I do? I need to get six sides. I want my snowflake to be an end, scientifically accurate snowflake. Okay, well if I have one fold, uh, let's see, that would give me not a full snowflake, so I'm going to do two folds. Let's see what happens with this. If I do two folds, and last time I did three folds, so I go fold it into sections of two. If I fold each of those up, that folds it into sections of four. And if I fold it up again, that folds it into sections of eight. And we end up with multiples of two, four, eight, 16, 32, and I skipped right over six. So here's where mathematics entered the fray. I thought, how in the world can I get a scientifically accurate six-sided snowflake? So I started to take a look. All right, let's fold the paper. If I fold the paper once, then I have folded a straight line. Later on, we're going to learn about straight angles, but straight angles are 180 degrees. If I fold it twice like this, 
and I take a look at the angles in the middle of my paper, then I end up with four quadrants, one, two, three, four angles, each one of those a 90 degree angle. If I fold it again, I end up with 45 degree angles. And every time I fold it in half, I cut the sides of those angles in half. So I end up with 45 degree angles. I end up with 22 and a half degree angles and so forth and so forth. And with that, I still cannot manage to get a six sided snowflake. So when I looked at this snowflake, I started thinking, what angles do I need to be able to get six sides well. If I could figure out that angle measure right there, then I could create that fold to be able to have six sides on my snowflake. So if I go once all the way around the circle and break that up into six different parts, then I should have the angle that I need. So once all the way around the circle is 360 degrees, and 360 divided by six angles gets me a measure of 60 degrees. I need some 60 degree angles if I am ever going to get a scientifically accurate snowflake. So let's go. One more time. Folding a paper in half gets me a straight angle. Straight angle is 180 degrees. 180 degrees is divisible by 60 conveniently. If I divide 180 divided by 60, I get 3. So instead of folding it into two pieces, I need to, at this point, fold it into three separate pieces. And if I fold it into three separate pieces and get this really fun ice cream cone shape right here, cut off the edge, then I end up with a nice little hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six-sided snowflake. I can then add some different designs to it if I feel like making some shapes in the middle. Okay. I want to cut a hole in my center maybe, cut a little bit of air off the edge to make it fancier, and I can unfold and get my wonderful little six-sided snowflake. Mathematics in art. Go tell Mrs. Seward I taught you some. Okay. Now, one more time, I need to show you a little bit slower how to do that fold, so let's watch one more paper. We're going to fold it in half. I found that if you do it hot dog style like this, it gets you the most area to work with for your snowflake. So we're going to fold it in half, hot dog style. This part is the tricky part, when we need to fold it into thirds. So this corner, I need to mark my center right here, and from there I'm going to fold this over so that it's crossing like that. Do not fold anything down because we're probably going to be a little off and have to make some adjustments. I'm going to then take this side and fold it over. Now if you've done this correctly, this edge right here should line up right along this edge where it's going to be folded. And inside here, this edge will sit right in the corner of that fold. If you do it perfectly, then it will line up exactly right on both of those sides. If you got it a little bit off, Say I went a little bit too far, and oh, that edge doesn't line up. I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit, just kind of scoot things over until you get things to line up. Once you've got them lined up nicely, then you can crease down here, crease down this side, and it will get you that ice cream cone. This edge right here is the outside edge of your hexagon, so if you cut that off, that will give you... that outside edge. This point right here is the middle, and these edges are the ones going up from the outside to the middle of your hexagon. If you fold it more, you're welcome to do that. It will make your pattern repeat more. You could even get it another fold, but make sure this middle stays where it's supposed to go. The more you fold it, 
the more you're going to get your pattern to repeat. So if you want a very intricate pattern that repeats itself a lot, you're going to fold it a lot. If you want something that's a little bit more distinct and simple, then you fold it less. The rest is up to you. You're welcome to make as many as you want. And you'll get things in multiples of six. So get some scratch paper, get a pair of scissors, and make some snowflakes. I want them decorated up around the room. Please leave them off of the smart board so that I can use that when I come back. I'm excited to see the designs that you guys come up with, and we will see you after the break.